Mitochondrial disease is often called an invisible disease. In many cases, you can't tell who suffers from it. In others, Mito brings with it developmental disabilities. In all cases, children with mitochondrial disease need your help in order to make their learning experience a success. It requires a kind of flexibility and ability to kind of observe the child and, you know, be sort of always staying a step ahead. That it's really a very tall order. And stop. The staff at the Integrated Preschool Weston Windows in Weston, Massachusetts, helps show us how to tailor a school day and curriculum for children with mitochondrial disease. Megan is a student at the school and suffers from Mito. Like others, she fatigues easily and conserving energy is key. Therapeutically, the approach for her has really been improving her strength, improving her balance, but also um, building in activities that are helping her pace her motor movements so that her output is more organized. She is now able to wait and listen to instruction and when she moves, it's in a much more organized, even um, uh, pattern so that she's more energy efficient in her output, which I believe has made a huge difference in her ability to, to participate in a 30-minute activity with, really without fatigue. It's important for these kids to eat and drink throughout the day before, for actually a variety of reasons. One is that um, some kids have issues with gut dysmotility, you know, they're just not their, um, their GI tract just isn't able to process um, food and liquid the way other people can, and so they can only tolerate small amounts, and so some of these kids really need to graze throughout the day, um, rather than having, you know, kind of well-defined big meals. Um, and also we find that um, many kids with mitochondrial disease don't tolerate um, going without liquids for a long period of time. They, they you know, they're kind of maintaining their, um, or meeting their, their maintenance fluid requirement is um, really important for a lot of these kids. The same is true of older children with the disease too. Hi, my name is Olivia Fritz. I'm 14 years old and I go to Barrington Middle School. Uh, my name is Harrison Fritz. I'm 18 years old and I just graduated from Barrington High School. Both this brother and sister have mitochondrial disease. While I'm at school, I always have a desk in the front row so that I can see the board easier. Um, I also always have a calculator with me, just like at home. Um, when I take an exam on a very tired day, I uh, go with my personal aide and she says the questions to me and I answer them into the tape recorder again. Then we uh, bring that back to my teacher. I actually completed um, my junior year and senior year at home through tutorial support. My English textbook I received on cassette or CD so that I could listen to it through my computer as opposed to having to read it. Um, I don't write any papers. Um, I type everything. Uh, and we reserve as much energy as possible so that when I do math work, I can, I can write that down because doing calculus on a computer is uh, not easy. <laughs> Temperature control in the classroom is another crucial element when it comes to helping students thrive in school. Mito patients are very sensitive to heat and can easily become overheated in the wrong classroom conditions. Within the school system, I pay more attention to the temperature in the classroom to make sure that the furnace isn't on high and also that we have an air conditioner for when it's really hot because we can really see with Megan when um, the temperature is too hot or not warm enough that she really starts to flag sooner. Heat isn't the only variable that can be dangerous to a patient with mitochondrial disease. Infections and sickness can be devastating to a patient, putting them at risk for further complications and long bouts of bed rest. Infection control is really critical for these kids and um, that's an area where the school nurse has a very important role to play. Um, we have patients where the school nurse has gone into the classroom and has taught kids, you know, how to wash their hands so that, and, and has sort of talked to them about how, you know, your hands are the, the best way to prevent transmission of infection um, is hand washing and, um, you know, teachers who keep Purell around in the classroom and, um, 
So, and also, you know, notifying parents when there is an infection in the classroom. We do try to protect Megan from illnesses that may occur in the regular preschool classroom. At the beginning of every year, we send home notices that just let the parents know that we do have a child with a decreased immune system. So just to be aware of when your own child is sick and to think twice about sending them in. While the symptoms associated with mitochondrial disease can vary, there seems to be a consistent theme for children afflicted with the disease. Parents must become effective advocates for their children. Educating school staff about this relatively unknown disease is critical. I think it's really important that, that parents keep in mind that, that what you're in fact doing is teaching the school staff and sort of staying as, as positive as possible while you're teaching them because they want to learn, you know, and they, they want to know what, what your child needs and how to best meet those needs in the classroom. True is a student at a preschool in Framingham. His mother has worked intimately with his team at school. And we had several meetings before True even started school to write a health care plan um, to have Deborah, his mom, teach the teacher and I and the teacher's assistant in the classroom about Mito and, and about True. So his health care plan is really individualized and tailored to, for True. Olivia and Harrison's mother spends much of her time working with school personnel on her children's behalf. In speaking with educators, one of the most important points I'd like to make is that mitochondrial disease and its symptoms and the presentation thereof are not predictable. The variability can literally go moment to moment. An IEP, or Individualized Education Plan, can also help guide teachers. If I was writing an IEP for a student on a mitochondrial disease, it's really a lot about the modifications, the accommodations in the classroom. So you want to make sure that that child is able to have that processing time when they need it. They're able to have a rest time when they need it. They're able to have breaks within their day so that they aren't exerting as much energy as some of the other children are. In those IEPs, many students with Mito have assistants or one-on-ones to help them stay healthy and alert while at school. My teachers are able to know what I need because I have a one-on-one -on -one aide and when my aide sees that I'm starting to deplete, she will tell my teachers and my teachers will allow me to go to the nurse for uh, 20 to 30 minute intervals for a nap. There are no limitations on any child and we hope with the right curriculum, the children living with mitochondrial disease will get the chances they need to shine their brightest. Eventually, I want to go through med school and be a cardiothoracic surgeon, uh, which is a lot of big words for heart surgeon. When I grow up and I'm out of high school, I really want to go to Johnson & Wales University to become a pastry chef, and then I want to own my own cake shop.